Uh, sounds like it sounds like you're grateful for the rigor of the FDA to begin with, and you think this one's uh, basically good to go. Well, that's the good thing about the FDA. Many times people say it's too slow. Well, it is the most advanced regulatory body in the world. And the one element that makes it very good is that they have this advisory committee process, which other authorities don't have. They have a process where data is brought into the open. It's well publicized. Experts get to talk about it in the open. Interested groups get to say what they want to say. And in the end, there is a vote that's fully publicized. It's all out in the open. So when finally decisions get made, it gives people a lot of confidence compared to bodies that meet privately in their offices and put things out. If you just go back to the GMO hysteria that overtook Europe 20 years ago, um, the FDA handled that very well through the advisory committee process. And that's one reason there is not that hysteria here that we have in Europe. So I think the fact right. that they went through this process is very encouraging for the approval of the COVID-19 virus vaccine. So what would you tell people this week who were paying more attention to what it means for a 16-year-old or a 17-year-old, what it means for someone with a history of serious allergies? You're not thrown by that. I would not be too concerned because that's, that's really the nature of new drugs and new vaccines. You learn about them as you go. But it's better to learn as you go than to hold it back from people who are waiting, waiting, waiting. In this case, we are waiting for this vaccine. Uh, the, it is true that certain populations were not studied. Certain other populations that may have severe uh, risk of severe allergies probably will be excluded in the labeling that will come out. But this thing is going to be mainstream. We, we're looking at 100 million people that hopefully in the U.S. who are going to be vaccinated by the end of February or by the end of March. And that's very good news. We're going to get our, come, our country back, our economy back in the back half of this year. And also we'll get our lives back. Fred, it's Morgan. It's good to see you. Uh, in terms of getting this vaccine or these vaccines uh, over the coming weeks uh, to, to be mainstream uh, coming into next year, I mean, you have to get the public on board and, and get people to feel safe and comfortable going out and getting a vaccine. I mean, I think about the flu vaccine and how many people don't actually go out and get that in large part because they say, ah, I don't want the virus injected into me. I'm going to get sick from it. I realize right or wrong in that thinking, um, this is a very different type of technology than this messenger RNA. So in terms of the fact that it's not a live virus that's getting injected into you, how does that factor into messaging and how uh, the government and how I guess the healthcare sector overall is going to get people on board to take it. It's a very good question. We're very fortunate that we are networked throughout the world and information flows very quickly. So when adverse reactions occur, they are reported very, very quickly at the speed of iPhones. It's really that, that fast. So in my own opinion, this thing is going to be as we go. There will be anecdotes of emerging adverse effects. The most important thing is that the CDC and the FDA have to do the proper messaging here to ensure that the thing is put in proper context and that people are constantly reminded that not only are they saving themselves by taking the vaccine, but they really are taking care of their friends, their families, their work colleagues, and society in general. We have to make this into a moral issue because we must get to the 70% target of herd immunity by May. That's how we'll get our whole lives back and our economy back. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.